Um, welcome everybody to today's Astroparticle Seminar. I'm happy to have uh, Agnieszka Janiuk as our speaker from the Center for Theoretical Physics of the Polish Academy of Sciences. Uh, Agnieszka did her PhD at the Nikolaus Copernicus Astronomical Center. And she was uh, a fellow at the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy. And then she went on for a postdoc at uh, the University of Nevada in Las Vegas. And now, as I said, she's faculty at the Center for Theoretical Physics of the Polish Academy of Sciences. And Agnieszka works on theoretical models and numerical simulations of black hole accretion processes. And he focuses on the time dependent mag magneto hydrodynamical modeling of accretion flows. So she tries to understand how jets work. Um, so she works on, for instance, general relativistic uh, MHD simulations of GRBs, uh, radiation pressure dominated disks. And uh, some examples of her work that I found are uh, spectral properties of the central engines of Seyfert one galaxies, neutrino cooled disks of, of gamma ray bursts. Uh, the origin of the bimodal distribution and the duration of, of GRBs, uh, the intermittent activity of jets, instabilities in black hole uh, accretion disks, uh, nucleosynthesis in GRBs, and links between the gravitational wave emission uh, of, of, and, and the GRB emission uh, that we have seen so far. And today, uh, she's going to talk to us about uh, magnetically arrested accretion flows near the black hole horizon. So, Aniska, thank you very much, and please take it away. Uh, thank you very much for this nice introduction. I'm really pleased with um, all the introduction and I, I thank you for the invitation to the seminar. It's an honor for me. Uh, so let me share my screen and presentation now. Uh, Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Agnieszka Janiuk, and I will tell about magnetically arrested accretion flows near the black hole horizon. Uh, the results, uh, which I'll be showing uh, in this um, presentation, uh, are uh, mainly obtained uh, through the work with my PhD students, Bestin James, uh, who is here uh, at the Center for Theoretical Physics on the third year of the PhD and also Ishika Palit, uh, who al already graduated last year and now is a postdoc uh, at the Tel Aviv University in the group of Omer Bromberg. Uh, and um, finally with Monika Mościbrocka, who is a professor at Radboud University in the Netherlands. Uh, so let me start with a general introduction about black holes in the universe. Uh, so uh, these are, uh, compact stars, stellar mass uh, black holes, uh, which reside uh, in transient and persistent X-ray sources and accrete matter from their companion stars in the process called accretion. Uh, we can also find uh, more massive black holes, uh, supermassive ones uh, in the centers of galaxies. Uh, here, uh, they uh, power the uh, engines of active galaxies and uh, uh, specifically blazars, uh, uh, which are uh, jet emitting sources. Um, also in gamma ray bursts, uh, we uh, think there is an uh, engine powering this gamma ray burst, uh, which contains a newly born black hole. Uh, in these sources, we observed light emitted from accretion disk, but also from the jets. Uh, the jets are uh, common phenomena in the universe. Um, I will not be speaking here about all possible uh, jets, uh, but the jets uh, from accreting uh, black holes. And uh, as I said, they are observed at different, very different mass scales, uh, and all of them need this uh, central engine to be launched. And this central engine is connected with the black hole and with the magnetic fields, uh, which are anchored uh, to the accretion disk and penetrate the black hole's ergosphere. Uh, and uh, thanks to this process, uh, the extraction of the rotational energy of the black hole uh, is possible. Uh, this uh, spinning black hole may twist open magnetic field lines and um, help the jet collimation, uh, while the power of the jet uh, in the process uh, and discussed originally by Blandford and Znajek, famous, famous uh, process, um, and the jet power scales with the square uh, of the uh, black hole spin and square of the uh, uh, magnetic flux on the black hole horizon. Mm. The gamma ray bursts are uh, one of these sources uh, in which we observe uh, astrophysical jets. Uh, gamma ray bursts are uh, transient events, very short durations, uh, either a fraction or of a second up to a few thousand seconds. Uh, they are um, 
peaking in gamma rays, so the energies observed here are on the order of mega electronovolts, but um, uh, uh, this energetics is mainly explained by a collimated relativistic outflow that is pushing through the interstellar medium. Uh, the gamma ray bursts uh, are uh, mm, classified into two groups, short and long gamma ray bursts, which basically differ um, with the uh, amount of the mass being supplied to a critic black hole, uh, in, in, in which uh, in the short burst, the amount of mass is small because uh, it comes from the disruption of the compact star in the binary merger event, while in the long burst, the mass supply comes from the collapse of a massive uh, uh, rotating uh, collapsing star. Both of these engines uh, can produce um, astrophysical jets. Uh, and the uh, origin of the emission uh, in gamma ray bursts is uh, at large distances. The prompt emission, uh, as you see here, uh, comes from the uh, uh, colliding shells uh, that uh, emit these uh, gamma rays in the um, uh, paradigm of the internal shock uh, model. Here, these uh, shells are emitted by the central engine at a, and at large distance, they collide with each other producing gamma rays. Uh, the afterglow emission of a gamma ray burst uh, is observed at lower energies. And here, the afterglow uh, originates from the interaction between the jet and the uh, surrounding interstellar medium. Uh, the properties of uh, gamma ray burst uh, jets um, are such that the, the emission uh, and uh, gamma ray spectra are non-thermal. So uh, this actually uh, poses a question uh, why, how to produce such a non-thermal non emission. Uh, the problem was uh, with the electron-positron pair production, uh, which would produce a thermal emission um, due to the huge optical depth of the medium. Um, but uh, this problem uh, has been solved um, because uh, of uh, the assumption, thanks to the assumption of a large bulk Lorentz factor. So here the, the um, pair production is no longer a problem to, uh, to uh, gamma ray burst uh, jet opacity. Uh, such a high Lorentz factor, uh, of course, uh, requires a very powerful engine, and also the explosion has to be uh, baryon clean, so to speak. So, so the ejecta mass uh, has to be uh, very small, and uh, this uh, jet is uh, dominated, dominated rather um, by the pointing energy, not by the thermal energy of the, of the mass. Uh, we observe these uh, gamma ray bursts in um, a, a wide range of, of uh, wavelengths. Uh, and the afterglows are, are also uh, um, giving actually the very high energy signal. So here you see uh, the recent discovery um, uh, obtained by, uh, made by the high uh, um, en energy stereoscopic system Cherenkov telescope um, has. Um, which uh, observed this GRB 1908-29. And the afterglow was observed between uh, four and 56 hours after the um, prompt uh, gamma ray burst trigger. And here you see the power low spectrum fitted in the range uh, uh, of uh, tera electronovolts. Uh, so what is interesting here in this observation is that the slope of the gamma ray and X-ray spectrum and light curve profiles are very similar. So you see here the extrapolation of the X-ray spectrum uh, and uh, up to the gamma rays. Uh, this is actually a problem for the uh, one zone emission model uh, that needs uh, uh, very high Lorentz factor, but uh, on the other hand, this, this jet should have decelerated uh, between these uh, two uh, observations. And uh, while um, it seems not to have decelerated so much because the slopes are similar, um, most probably uh, the one zone emission model in the jet is not sufficient to explain this. Uh, another uh, type of sources uh, that are powered by uh, such an uh, engine and uh, uh, emit uh, high energy radiation uh, in, in jets are blazers. Uh, they are type of agents uh, where non-thermal emission, non-thermal radiation is produced, and uh, they show also very rapid variability of the uh, count rates uh, down to the uh, hours or even minute uh, time scales. 
Mm, and this variability has uh, very large amplitudes uh, uh, over uh, two or, or more uh, orders of magnitude. So here you see an example of, of a blazer, Markarian 501, observed uh, a year ago by Astrosat. Uh, the blazer spectra are uh, um, modeled with the synchrotron self Compton uh, radiation. Uh, um, and uh, this uh, is a inverse Compton radiation produced when synchrotron radiation photons are upscattered by their, their own emitting uh, electrons. Uh, so here you see a blazer spectrum uh, fitted with the synchrotron self Compton um, model. You see uh, characteristic double uh, bumps. Uh, but again, here, um, the model which was used is this uh, simple one on synchrotron self Compton model. Uh, it is very popular due to simplicity and small number of free parameters. But uh, as I mentioned before, uh, it may not be um, adequate to explain all the observations, especially if uh, we find uh, next examples of the very high energy radiation in tera, tera electron volts, uh, for instance. Uh, the variability timescales seen in blazars are uh, uh, very short, and they are much shorter than in fertilite crossing times uh, at the black hole horizon. So this suggests that variability involves uh, emission in a very small region within uh, the out outflowing jet. Uh, also, Lorentz factors in blazars must be uh, large in comparison, for instance, to, to quasars. Uh, they, they must be uh, at least uh, 50. Uh, the bulk Lorentz factor to pre prevent again the reabsorption of gamma rays by the electron positron per creation. Uh, and uh, here you see uh, an example of the simulation uh, done recently. Uh, it is a, a particle acceleration uh, simulation of the particle acceleration uh, in the magnetic reconnection sites within such jets. The jet is subject to a kink instability. Uh, and um, the accelerated particles here may interact with the ambient medium. And there is a suggestion that these uh, particles are both responsible for production of the uh, high energy gamma rays and also for neutrino production. And in fact, neutrinos are being observed in, in uh, blazars. Um, uh, for instance, in 2017, the uh, blazar source, uh, this very famous source, TXS, 0506 uh, was observed by the ice cube detector uh, and they detected high energy neutrino. Uh, and also um, the team of uh, ice group uh, analyzed um, uh, former observations of this source and they actually interpreted uh, uh, this source to, to have been um, already producing neutrinos at least twice in their, in their data, which is seen. Uh, and also about uh, 16 more sources are now speculated to have individual neutrino track events, um, as suggested uh, last month uh, in, the, in the work by Padovani. So it, it seems that blazers are really neutrino emitters. It cannot be said the same, I mean, uh, about gamma ray bursts. So far, we only have uh, the upper limits for the, from the ice cube as for the gamma ray bursts. Uh, but anyway, despite this, uh, differences in scale and, and uh, differences in the observational um, cap capabilities of, of the detectors and observational facts that, that we discovered. There are uh, many common features uh, between blazers and uh, gamma ray bursts. Uh, so here, for example, you see very interesting um, result which shows uh, that there is a, a broad uh, band correlation between uh, minimum time scale of the variability of a source and uh, the um, estimated uh, Lorentz factor. The Lorentz factor is here in the logarithmic scale. So you see for gamma ray bursts, the Lorentz factors are, of course, uh, much larger than for blazers, but also the variability times time scales are um, orders of magnitude uh, smaller. Uh, and there is a, this correlation seems to encompass very wide range of the black hole masses, uh, yes, here, because we, we range them from between the stellar mass and supermassive black holes. 
Uh, so now uh, coming to, to, to my work, uh, I would like to uh, focus on the properties of the central engine. The central engine uh, is uh, modeled as an accretion disk around the black hole. Of course, uh, it has to uh, be powerful enough to, to large uh, high velocity, high Lorentz factor jets uh, on the axis of, of the rotation of the black hole. Um, Unfortunately, uh, we are not able uh, to model the whole system in one single simulation. So we ad either can uh, focus on the central engine scale or on the jet scale. I will focus now on the central engine scale in the simulations, but uh, the properties of the central engine, such as uh, the variability of this engine, for instance, are uh, supposedly manifesting themselves in the jets uh, properties. Uh, so our uh, numerical tool for the engine simulations, uh, which we use here uh, in my group, uh, is the uh, HARM code. So this is a general relativistic MHD code that provides solver for uh, basic equations of physics, the continuity, <laughs> conservation of mass and energy momentum, and induction equations. Uh, they are uh, listed here, these equations in the uh, standard way. Uh, you notice here there is a stress energy tensor in T mu nu, which contains the gen in general the gas and electromagnetic part. So gas has to be always present and uh, we can embed our gas with a magnetic field of a chosen uh, configuration in the initial conditions. Uh, supplemented equation is the equation of state. Mm, here, the simplest case is that of the ideal gas where the pressure scales uh, with an internal energy mm, in this way. Um, I should uh, apologize you for the confusion of the notation because here uh, gamma is uh, used as an adiabatic index, but it will not appear uh, in any other slide, uh, I think so. The code is scale-free, so it works in the units of uh, C equals G equals M equals one. And this is uh, very convenient for our um, simulations because we can scale uh, the results uh, to, to physical units, to physical masses, for instance, uh, uh, in the, um, uh, while interpreting the results. But the, the code works uh, very conveniently in the, um, in the uh, code units, so to say. Uh, the numerical sc uh, scheme uh, solves uh, the mm, conserved variables, uh, which are um, basically the mm, total energy and the uh, commoving uh, mass of the, uh, of the gas. Uh, and uh, it does also inversion uh, at each and every time step to a primitive uh, variable vector. Uh, the primitive variables are such uh, which have uh, uh, simple physical interpretation. So for instance, internal energy and the mm, rest mass density, uh, which are, uh, for instance, important for the equation of state. Uh, but uh, what I want to uh, highlight here is that this MHD scheme is uh, very robust and it is uh, being used by a, a large community now. Um, people have their own versions of the harm code. They are uh, all um, possibly, they can be found uh, in, in the repositories such as GitHub and uh, they are uh, publicly available. Uh, we have our uh, own um, version which was developed from the 2D uh, um, version by uh, Charles Kami, and it is now extended to 3D and parallelized with MPI, which helps us to run um, long uh, duration runs and um, runs uh, in three dimensions with uh, adequate resolution. Okay, so uh, we have a number of initial conditions for this code. Uh, here, the adequate initial condition for modeling the central engine uh, of a jet uh, is the equilibrium torus, uh, which is um, quite a standard solution, uh, which provides a matter configuration in a stationary state around the uh, Kerr black hole in the, in the Kerr metric. Uh, so um, this structure uh, is depicted here. Um, uh, the illustration actually comes from the work by Marek Abramowicz, uh, Jaroszyński and Sikora 78, but uh, and there is uh, um, uh, alternative uh, uh, work by Fishbone and Moncliffe. So typically we cite this, uh, this torus configuration as the Fishbone and Moncliffe torus. Uh, 
So it gives us our uh, initial uh, stationary configuration, but of course we have to perturb it and start accretion uh, by imposing the magnetic fields, which transport angular momentum. Otherwise the angular momentum here is constant with the radius. And uh, if we do not transport it out outwards, uh, the matter would not accrete through this torus. So here you see illustrations. The illustrations on the left uh, show um, and the, in the top panel, the Spishbone and Moncliffe torus configuration uh, at, um, in a stationary state or at the initial uh, time equals zero. And here you see evolved state on the right hand side. Uh, so you see the mm, magnetic field mm, here um, changed uh, its configuration. Uh, you see the turbulence here. Mm, that uh, tangles twisted magnetic field lines inside the torus. And you also see the open magnetic field lines, uh, which formed uh, uh, at the rotation axis of this black hole, which is sitting here at uh, the center. This is an equatorial plane. Mm, so you see here the configuration is uh, still very symmetric with respect to the equatorial plane. Uh, and it is also uh, actually symmetric. This, uh, this result comes from a two-dimensional uh, simulation lab. Uh, on the bottom slides, you see mm, a different type of initial uh, condition. It was actually the uh, torus uh, uh, model derived, uh, I mean, torus torus solution uh, derived analytically in uh, 1985 by Sandeep Chakrabarty. And uh, it actually represents also a stationary configuration of a barotropic fluid um, in the Kerr metric. Uh, it differs from the Fishpon and Monkey solution mainly uh, with the fact that the uh, specific angular momentum is not constant with radius, but it is uh, constant on, on some um, so-called uh, von Zeibel cylinders. Anyway, uh, this is also a stationary solution, but uh, after we impose a magnetic field, it starts evolving. And you see here an example of an evolved structure on the right uh, panel of this slide. Okay, and from such a torus, uh, either initial uh, state we we assume here, actually, we assume this Chakrabarty torus uh, for, for a start, uh, but in the evolved uh, state, uh, here the evolved state means we evolved the model until 2000 uh, dynamical timescales. And this snapshots show, show the structure. Torus is here in this uh, region and uh, extended um, uh, vertical. Uh, dimensions show, shows you the base of a jet that is being launched from such a such an engine here. Uh, so here you see the, the distribution of density uh, in a logarithmic scale. Uh, the color scale uh, clearly shows that the dense torus uh, is present only at the equatorial plane. Here at the mm, larger altitudes uh, at both sides there is a wind. Mm. Uh, this wind helps collimating the, the, the jet uh, outflow and the jet is very uh, rarefied. Um, there is uh, not much density here, um, so it is supposed to be uh, baryon clean, uh, but it is very magnetized. Uh, the third panel shows the magnetization uh, in logarithmic scale. Uh, sigma uh, is denoting magnetization. Uh, H is the enthalpy and gamma is the uh, Lorentz factor, the local Lorentz factor here depicted in this last slide. And uh, from the energy conservation, uh, we have such, an, uh, such a relation that this uh, general energetic parameter mu depicted here is equal to that uh, sum of the in in inertial thermal energy and the pointing energy uh, uh, given by the magnetization. And uh, the maximum achievable Lorentz factor at infinity, so not here, not local Lorentz factor, but the, the, um, uh, the infinite uh, Lorentz factor, which we want actually to supply for the jet to the uh, um, large uh, scale um, is equal um, to this mu uh, value because uh, at infinity, all energy is supposed to be transformed to the bulk kinetic uh, energy of the jet. So it is important quantity. I would like to uh, point your attention to this, to this quantity specifically. And we will see here uh, how it varies with time. Uh, we, we extract the value of this mu parameter at a given point on our computational grid in the jet at, and at a given time. Uh, so we see here the evolution at the specific localization. I think it is about uh, 200 RG, uh, very close to the, um, 
vertical axis inside the jet, uh, and the time variability of this mu is measured uh, at the inner reg regions of the jet. Uh, as we found uh, um, in our work, this variability time scale is correlated with the uh, time scale of the fastest growing mode of the magnetorotational instability, TMRI. And you see here the dashed lines uh, are representing the duration of this uh, fastest uh, growing modes in the disk. So the jet variability is di directly, directly reflecting uh, the magnetorotational instability in the, in the accretion uh, disk. Uh, we studied uh, many models, fa family of models were parameterized with the black hole spin ranging from 0.6 to 0.98. So uh, our um, black hole was either moderately or very um, rapidly spinning. Uh, and we also parameterized these models with an initial uh, maximum to gas to magnetic pressure ratio. Uh, it is denoted uh, typically by the symbol beta. Um, so the, the smaller beta, the more magnetized initially is our uh, torus. Yes, and then the magnetic field evolves and uh, uh, is uh, transported to the jets. Um, the poloidal magnetic fields were uh, initialized with the circular wire configuration. Uh, this vector potential is quite standard textbook uh, formula. I do not report it here, but it can be found in the uh, Jackson electrodynamics. Uh, and uh, as a result, sorry, uh, as a result, uh, we obtain such a family of models uh, that differ uh, with the um, black hole spin parameter here, and you see the distribution of the gas to magnetic pressure ratio at the equatorial plane of a torus. You see the minimum uh, here uh, around the, uh, uh, the pressure maximum radius, about uh, 16 gravitational radii. Okay, what are the results? Because results are, are quite interesting. Uh, we found uh, that- the... Agnieszka, yeah? well, there's, there's one question in the audience by Enrico. Enrico, you can just ask. Yes. Uh, hi, uh, can you hear me well? It's, it's a bit low. It's, um, it's very quiet, I cannot hear. Okay, what about now? Yes. Now better. Okay, uh, so it's just a curiosity. You said that there, uh, if I understood correctly, that there is a, a wind from the torus uh, that is helping collimating the jet? Uh, yes. And yeah, can uh, can you say uh, some words more about the, this kind of wind? Is is the wind, for instance, that can give rise to the recently observed uh, ultra fast outflows, uh, or is uh, another kind of wind? Uh... Well, as for the for the speed of this wind, we measured them in some other simulations. I'm not showing here, but this wind is basically also magnetically driven. It is not an ultra fast in the sense that the, the velocities are on the order of the 20% of speed of light at most. Ah, yeah, yeah, it's exactly what I mean. I mean, uh, uh -huh. this, these phenomena are measured with 0.1 C as speed. So yeah, I think this ah. answer to my question. Okay, so, so okay. I, I suppose, yes, it, it can be the same wind. Yeah, okay, okay. interesting, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, so let me now move move to this this uh, correlations because well yeah I, I mentioned in one of the introductory slides about the correlation between minimum time scale of the variability and uh, jet Lorentz uh, factor. Uh, so we uh, can measure this in our simulation. The minimum variability time scale is taken at the peak with uh, the half maximum of the mu time series, which we derive from the simulation. And uh, we measure also the Lorentz factor. Uh, this is estimated as the time averaged mu uh, in the same simulation. And we see uh, ni nice uh, dependence. Both quantities do depend on the black hole spin in a very, in a very um, straightforward way. Uh, and there is also a scatter uh, because uh, of different magnetic fields assumed um, at the initial uh, initializing of our simulation. So you see here on the left plot the correlation between gamma and uh, black hole spin for this whole family of models, which uh, differ with respect to the initial um, value of the uh, disk magnetization. And on the right side, you see the anti-correlation between uh, MTS, minimum time scale of variability, and the black hole spin uh, on average. Yes, th so this is uh, averaged uh, values. Uh, 
Uh, we also um, probed the uh, time variability by Fourier transforms. Uh, so here are the results uh, obtained by Shikapalit for uh, the power density spectra um, as, a, as a function of the frequency. We fitted the power laws uh, and we uh, check at what is the slope of this power law. Uh, so here uh, you see two results on the, on the right, the slope of the um, PDS spectrum versus the Lorentz factor. Uh, the upper panel uh, refers to the inclination angle, so um, the viewing angle, I mean, uh, of, the, of the jet, five degrees, and the bottom panel uh, refers to the viewing angle of 10 degrees. Uh, so actually only in the, in the first case, we see some slight dependence, some correlation, while here there is uh, rather not so much correlation. So we interpret it uh, act, uh, in, in the sense that the, Closer we look at the at the jet to the um, to the axis, such as in, in case of blazers, for instance, when we see a really uh, top view of the source along the uh, uh, along the jet um, symmetry axis, uh, then we can find such such a dependence between the slope of the PDS and Lorentz factor. And uh, I would be actually interested if this is uh, what observers uh, can can tell us as well. Okay, so so uh, of course, as uh, for discussion, um, um, it, it is only a manifestation of the central engine variability. While the really detected gamma ray flux can exhibit a large variety of patterns, uh, and there are a lot of complicated processes that govern the high energy radiation, which we do not capture here in such uh, simple simulations. Um, but um, the flux can vary um, on multiple time scales and also. Uh, can be fitted with the power law function. Uh, so we, we can speculate that our relation between mm, the slope of the PDS and the, mm, um, and, and the mm, Lorentz factor here is uh, physical mm, and can um, manifest in the observations. And we also speculate that the relation between Lorentz factor and minimum time scale of the variability um, uh, can span uh, the 10 orders of magnitude and reach the blazer sample. So um, detailed uh, uh, um, conversion to the, to the physical uh, scales uh, is done in our work. Uh, the black hole uh, mass scales simply uh, via the gravitational time scale, yes, because uh, the time scale which we use uh, is uh, GC um, um, over. Um, GM over C cube, yes, GM over C cube. So it's case with the mass of the black hole directly. Mm. Uh, and smaller values of the Lorentz factor should be related mainly with the smaller black hole spin. Uh, our uh, uh, disks uh, are in magnetically arrested state. So this is uh, something which I gave here in the title of my, uh, of my presentation. Uh, we, um, uh, the simulations which I presented so far were two dimensional. Uh, so actually it is difficult to capture the details of this magnetically arrested state because uh, as the definition says, uh, this magnetic flux which builds up uh, near the black hole horizon prevents uh, accretion in the equatorial plane. It pushes back the matter and uh, the only possibility for the matter to, to accrete to the black hole and go beyond the black hole horizon is to make some uh, non axisymmetric um, structure configuration that uh, um, leads to uh, some kind of uh, instabilities uh, in, in this accretion flow in, in near the black hole horizon. Uh, so, um, basically, three dimensional simulations are essential to study this magnetically arrested state. Uh, and we did it so far, but uh, of course, there is a lot of work about uh, this um, topic. Uh, Initially, uh, it was noticed that uh, only toroidally dominated models lead to the uh, large uh, magnetic flux on the horizon, but actually more recently, it was uh, um, found again that uh, the uh, poloidal magnetic fields are also sufficient for that. Uh, the criterion to find uh, the magnetically arrested state is the uh, dimensionless specific magnetic flux on the horizon given by this form, uh, and it has to be much larger than one. How, how much it, it is debated, but at least uh, 10 or 20, yeah, this ratio. 
Uh, and this magnetically arrested state may be uh, realized in both uh, supermassive black holes. Uh, for instance, it is suggested that uh, the smart state leads to periodic structures, which are seen in the radio brightness of uh, large scale jets, um, uh, and such as here. Uh, and also in the stellar mass uh, black hole environment, uh, for instance, can um, be responsible for the suppressed jet emission. Uh, also, in case of gamma ray bursts, uh, there is a, mm, a strong uh, mm, uh, suggestion that temporal variability of these GRBs uh, is, uh, in, uh, is well explained in the context of math, because uh, the time scale here uh, of this variability would, would be directly uh, related to the um, freefall time scale of these uh, patches of matter, uh, which uh, overcome uh, the, the magnetic barrier. Uh, so our math simulation uh, will be presented um, here. Uh, we start from non-axisymmetric uh, random perturbation in energy uh, given by, by uh, um, small uh, number, I mean uh, about 5% uh, of the um, initial uh, energy uh, um, density is perturbed. Uh, we also have to uh, make some uh, technical adjustments to our code. For instance, the inversion method has to be adjusted to minimize the entropy in the cells that are near uh, the rotation axis of the black hole where the magnetization is the highest. And we start with the initial vector potential given here uh, for the magnetic field. So you see here it is multiplied by, by a, a radius to the uh, power five, uh, which actually is uh, important because we have to bring during the process of accretion a large magnetic flux from uh, um, large distances. Otherwise, if, if we start immediately with a very large magnetic flux on the horizon, we would not be able to run uh, this model at all. But uh, we want to gradually build uh, a magnetically arrested state. And here you see the evolved state of this uh, simulation at the time uh, equal uh, um, two times 10 to four. Uh, so 20,000 uh, gravitational uh, time scales um, at uh, the um, scale of 100 um, gravitational radii. And here on the right hand side, you see the zoom in uh, view of the same simulation scales to 10 RG. So here you see the zoom in uh, of the flow. Uh, this is the polar plane and this is the equatorial plane. So you see how the matter actually uh, wants to reach this uh, black hole horizon um, forming uh, kind of uh, finger-like structure uh, where you have uh, also uh, magnetic field uh, um, streamlines uh, represented by these, uh, these thin lines. And uh, if you can see uh, in detail, uh, these lines are reconnecting here. So uh, the matter is pushed out, um, but also the, the magnetic field interchange instability occurs here. Yes, So, so we, we interchange uh, the um, magnetic energy with the thermal energy. And this process uh, allows matter to accrete uh, beyond, the, uh, beyond the horizon. Uh, here I plot uh, the uh, quantity uh, that defines the madness of the state. So this dimensionless magnetic flux on the horizon. Uh, so phi uh, is integrated, uh, surface integrated BR component, and uh, M dot is the mass accretion rate, dimensionless one. We divide it um, to obtain the dimensionless quantity, which defines our magnetically arrested state. Uh, and you see that it is larger than 10 in most of our models. So we actually pretty well uh, um, reproduce this magnetically arrested state. Uh, here you see the accretion uh, disk magnetic field, mm, the ratio actually of the toroidal to a poloidal field in this flow in the same uh, simulation. Uh, these models, uh, these are two models actually, they differ with the black hole spin. Uh, the black hole spin 0 0.9 is on the left and uh, on the right, uh, the plot represents the spinless uh, black hole. Uh, so you can see very well that the disc toroidal fields uh, is 
produced here, especially in the in the left model. And there is a lot of toroidal field uh, accessing the poloidal one produced in the in the disk. Uh, I remind you that we started from a poloidal configuration initially, so we did not have the toroidal component. Now we have. Um, dominant toroidal magnetic field, both in the jet and also in the disk. Uh, there are two different uh, reasons for, for this, because the disk toroidal field is resulting from a differential rotation, uh, while the jet uh, toroidal field is resulting from the spinning of the black hole. Uh, but actually what you see here is also uh, something nice that is um, uh, giving us the toroidal uh, magnetic field component in the disk equatorial plane uh, because of the energy transfer from the rotating black hole to the, uh, to the disk. And uh, these plots uh, show the evolution of the jet, the toroidal magnetic field. These are so-called uh, butterfly diagrams. Uh, I don't know why, probably uh, with uh, some analogy to the solar activity and, and these, these butterfly diagrams are uh, frequently plotted uh, uh, in the solar cycles. Um, but uh, they are um, uh, understood in a similar way uh, to uh, show the spatio-temporal evolution of the azimutally average toroidal field, BFI, uh, at a chosen radius. Uh, here on the, uh, on the left panel is actually, uh, uh, the left panel represents the averaged um, toroidal field at the radius 20 RG. So it is not large, uh, not, not, not very, very large, but uh, on the right side, there is a zoom in and the um, values are averaged at the uh, 10 gravitational uh, radii. So you see how the, the field is uh, transported to the jets um, and uh, the polar regions are here, South Pole and the North Pole of the jet. And finally, uh, the energetic structure and profile of the jet. This is also uh, interesting uh, to see. Uh, well, and the visualization is just uh, to, to picture yourself the 3D structure of a jet. This plot uh, in color scale shows the distribution of this uh, mu energetics quantity. Yes, so our total energy in the jet pointing energy mostly. Mm. You see it is, uh, Red, the, the red color is somewhere in, in between the jet edge and the, the, the axis. Yes, so it is not the largest at the axis of the jet, but it is larger at uh, angle around five, five degrees or something like that. And uh, here on these uh, graphs, you see the time averaged profiles of a jet at the distance of 2000 RG. Yeah, so probably a uh, larger distance than this, than this plot shows. And uh, these two mm, families of models uh, show our different initial conditions for the torus structure. So the Chakrabarti torus model is here on the top uh, panel and the Fishbone and Monkey torus is here in the bottom panel. Uh, so you see here basically uh, that the profiles uh, differ uh, um, quite uh, substantially from this famous uh, top hat uh, jet profile, which is uh, frequently evolved to mm, simply describe the structure uh, of the, of the uh, astrophysical jets. And uh, what is, what is in interesting, of course, is to um, somehow uh, infer the information about the jet opening angle and uh, uh, compare it uh, with observed uh, jet opening angles. Uh, so we would like to, to know uh, what is the jet op opening angle, but uh, First of all, our simulations uh, give a little bit uh, uh, scatter of the values depending on, on the model parameters and the, actually the, the very model of the initial structure. Uh, and our opening angle can be on the order of 10 degrees, but equally well of 20 degrees. While here also the uh, observations are uh, quite uh, inconclusive so far, because this afterglow observations of this GRB uh, show best fitting top hat of axis jet models with two opening angles, five and 15 degrees. And you can see that none of these models uh, actually fits, uh, fits the, um, the whole observation, yes, the whole, the whole uh, afterglow uh, light curve. And finally, uh, this 
jet that there was a question about the wind already but yeah the, the, the wind helps collimate the jet but also uh, the wind will um, be a medium through which the, the, the jet uh, has to penetrate uh, especially if we uh, have some um, ejecta like in gamma ray bursts uh, we have the ejecta from the uh, binary merger or in long gamma ray bursts we have the stellar envelope through which the jet has to break out uh, so this interaction of the relativistic jet uh, with the ejecta will shape the structure of the outflow uh, and also um, some simulations uh, are now um, um, performed to, to and show that uh, there can be oscillations, for instance, uh, around the uh, axis of the jet due to the inhomogeneities here um, encountered during the propagation of the jet through the wind. So I, I think I, I'm about to conclude this talk. Uh, in summary, I, I, want to, I want to say that the MHD simulations uh, of the uh, uh, disk jet uh, central engine showed that the rotational instabilities have imprint on the variability of the jet. Uh, um, secondly, that we find uh, correlations between jet Lorentz factor and variability timescales, uh, and uh, we claim that they are driven mainly by the black hole spin, while various disk magnetizations can induce uh, additional scatter to these correlations. Uh, the magnetically arrested state in which variability arises from unstable accretion flow mediated by the interchange instabilities and reconnection events explains episodes of jet intermittency. And it works in black holes of all scales. Uh, the jet profile uh, which we model is different from a simple top hat structure. There are uh, possible interactions between jet components uh, which occur also for very small viewing angles. And for instance, they, they can manifest in flares or even neutrino emissions. Uh, in gamma ray bursts, uh, the interactions between jet and disk wind may shape the variability profile uh, down to very small time scales. Uh, I would like to thank the supercomputing centers uh, uh, in which uh, we use it, uh, the resources. Uh, uh, first of all, the Warsaw University uh, supercomputing center, and secondly, the uh, Cifronet in Kraków. Mm, and the post-processing and visualizations were made by my students here locally in, in uh, CFT. And uh, finally, I want to advertise or maybe encourage rather than, than advertise because uh, there is a possibility for postdoctoral PhD position in my group. Uh, the general scope of this PhD um, would be numerical modeling of aggression onto black holes, central engines and uh, astrophysical jets. Uh, and uh, we specifically invite uh, students or, or postdocs who would like to join our uh, team uh, and uh, currently uh, are mm, looking for for uh, for employment. So so I mean we encourage uh, citizens of Ukraine who are coming uh, to our country to uh, just join our team, and uh, there will be no uh, bureaucratic problems. Our director is very open to to newcomers. So thank you very much for attention, and I happy to answer questions. Excellent. Thank you so much, Aniska. Uh, and thank you also for advertising these, these possibilities. Um, we have questions from the audience. I think, uh, Enrico, that's a new hand, so that's probably you. Uh, yes. Uh, hi. Another curiosity. Um, I was wondering, uh, there could be a relevant effect of uh, inverse Compton losses in the plasma surrounding the, the black hole? Yes, you you mean the like a corona? Yeah. Um, of course, yes. The, at least in the in the active galaxy centers, that the, there is um, this this model about uh, inverse Compton process, uh, which shapes the power law um, tail um, in in the X-ray spectrum. So so we basically the the non-thermal emission from the from the corona. Okay, and could it play somehow also a dynamical role in the in the wind profile or or in the jet launching? Mm, I'm not sure about the jet launching if if this this inverse Compton, but uh, well, 
as, as for the for the wind, uh, I mean, here in, in, in my, my simulations, we, we do not have uh, radiation transport, so I cannot answer precisely. Uh, what I know is that um, there are these radiation driven winds. Yes, uh, so some other people really uh, focus on these properties of the wind. So I, I believe yes, that, 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 that there can be effect of the of the radiation um, pressure in, in the wind and also the, the force, yes, radiation force for accelerations of the wind. No, yeah, it's really interesting that with your magnetically dominated model, somehow you obtain the same uh, uh, kind of wind profile for this uh, outflow that is collimating the jet. So this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, we, we do not have both process. The, the, there should be also uh, radiation GRMHD to, to study the, how, how it uh, works together. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's a comple complex stuff to include everything, but yeah, uh, thank you. Okay, and I think uh, Irene? Yes, thanks, Anja, for the nice overview. I wanted to ask you in one of the last slides, you were showing this uh, possibility of forming uh, multiple uh, shocks that were collimating the jets. Uh, is it number 33 maybe? Yes, exactly. Uh, I was wondering, uh, is there, oh, you don't do radiation transfer, but is there any possibility to have some observational features that would tell us that there are these multiple shock systems forming? Uh, well, this is not my simulation. This is uh, from the paper by Davide Lazati. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they refer to some um, light curves, yes, and, and they, they claim that there are this um, millisecond time scale variability uh, in, in, the, in the gamma ray bursts, so, so the, they attribute this uh, to these oscillations in these shocks. I see. Thank you. Yes. Okay, uh, Mariana? Um, hi. Um... Thanks for a great talk. I have a question about this particular slide. Um, there are two pictures left and right, and they seem to have the same scale on the color, and they're both showing densities, but they have they look different. So can you tell me what is the difference? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure at the moment. As I say, it's, it's just an illustration from, from, from Lazati paper. Uh, you are right, the density are, are similar, uh, the density scale, yeah. Okay. But, but I, I, I would need to check <laughs> what is actually the difference between two panels. Sorry for, for, for missing that. Okay. Uh, Marcus? Yeah, thank, also thank you for the nice talk. Um, so you mentioned them briefly neutrinos in, in your summary. Uh, do I understand this correctly? This is referring to some internal shocks that you form with cosmic ray acceleration there? Uh, yes, exactly. Yes, um, I, I mean uh, exactly that uh, these neutrinos um, are supposed to originate from the high, high energy particles. Yes, they are accelerated mm -hmm. in the shocks. And uh, mm -hmm. if the jet is... is uh, complex, yes, and, and uh, there is a lot of the sites of these uh, reconnections inside the jet. And the particles can be accelerated um, to a, a very large um, uh, energies, very high energies, but also it's possible that maybe their uh, distribution is, is uh, different from power law. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm a, li a little bit speculating uh, with respect to this, but um, in contrast to this to this uh, one zone model, yeah, uh, the situation is actually much more uh, complex with this um, acceleration. And these particles, of course, they are um, responsible for production both of, of uh, gamma rays, yes, uh, and also neutrinos. And, and the gamma rays themselves would not be a direct probe of these interactions because of other uh, processes of gamma rays. The gamma well, rays are taking place. Yeah, gamma rays are more easily absorbed or, or scattered on the way, mm. but neutrino has, uh, is bringing direct information without any interactions on the way yeah, to our detectors. This is what I mean. And I have an, another question, if I may. Um, so, 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 
so you showed um, simulations uh, with different, I think, jet opening angles, jet viewing angles. I think this was slide, uh, I don't recall, 30. Uh, I, th I think it's 32, the next one. Uh -huh, here, yes, the observation yeah. by Mar Margotti. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so the uh, the solid lines here are the, the, the models. Uh, so do I understand this correctly? This is uh, just a simple top hat uh, jet here with uh, some, some viewing angle relative to this? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, they show in the top panel there is, I think, five, and in the bottom panel, 10 degrees mm -hmm. uh, of so the if, opening if, angle mm -hmm. of this model. Yes, the models differ um, with, with the opening angle of this jet. Yeah. So and they the are light caps at different, mm -hmm. uh, different um, wavelength. Right. So in, in the previous plot, you had your uh, results on basically the distribution of the Lorentz factor with respect to the emission angle. If you would, for example, in the top model here, uh, if, if you would redo the calculation for this, I mean, the different jet uh, structure, do you get something which is closer to the data on the next slide? Um, well, I mean, uh, with a light curve, yes, because yeah. this is time averaged, yes. So um, I, I, uh -huh. I would need to uh, move back one step, yes, uh -huh. not not make the okay. time averaged profile, right. but make a light curve, yes. But I, I, I think, <laughs> yeah, it's this something. Is integrated. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'll, I have one question. Uh, so pretty early on, I think it's around slide fifteen or so. You show that at infinity you get a maximum value of your Lorentz factor, right? It's equal to mu. Fifteen? No. Uh, I, it, maybe maybe it's later. Yeah, that one. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at infinity, the Lorentz factor reaches its maximum, which is mu, which is the the, inter the inertial thermal energy and the point in flux. My question is is a bit general. Do you ever reach a condition where you saturate uh, gamma? In realist in a realistic setting, do you ever reach mu? Um, well, we we reach this yes mu on the order of hundred. Yeah, in different simulations, this is one example. But uh, well, we can we can reach also mu about thousand. Yes, here. Okay, so it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, so it's possible for for extremely high black hole spin. Yeah, we reach few hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just wanted to check about that. Thank you. I don't see any other hand raised. So if there is no urgent question, uh, let's thank uh, Agnieszka again. Thank you so very much for a great talk. And um, yeah, so you know uh, that there's some opportunities over there and if you're interested, please write to her. Um, everybody, thank you for being here. Uh, we see each other in a couple of weeks for our next seminar. Thank you, Agnieszka. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Have a nice afternoon. Bye. Thank you.